Hello, welcome to This Week in Enterprise Tech. I'm Hyun Park from Amalgam Insights, joined as always by Charlie Araujo of the DX Report, DX Institute. Uh, today, we've got a bunch of topics to talk about. Uh, of course, there will be your uh, fair share of AI, but there's uh, plenty of other things happening in the IT world that are also important to the CIO and the ascendant CIO wannabes out there. So, Charlie, uh, what do you want to talk about first? Well, first of all, you, you're lying. It's all AI. Everything is AI. These days. <laughs> it's impossible not talking about AI. I was having a conversation with a woman who specializes in working with product marketers and holding out how to best leverage AI. And, and she's asking me, what's my AI play? And it's like, mm -hmm. you, you, how do you avoid the conversation today? It's just, it's so integral to everything. It's, it's, it's pretty remarkable, really, if we think about it. Um, in the context of a year ago, I mean, we've been talking about AI for a while, but it was always in these pr pretty narrow bands, and now it's just infused into everything. Um, ironically, though, I think the first topic is is actually one that doesn't have much to do with AI. There's a little bit, um, mm -hmm. much to do with AI, and it's a topic that we covered a while ago. And I want, you know, this is this is really a kind of in your sweet spot as far as um, being much more of the real analyst than say I am. Um, but that is the the Broadcom. We were talking about Broadcom's acquisition of VMware a couple of weeks back and about some of the pressure that it was creating as they were to making these dramatic changes. And and we sort of made the case, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, I made the case sort of that this is, you know, sort of the the money grab of just taking a, a an aging technology and sort of milking it. Um, and some of the moves they were making seemed to solidify that. And and so what somewhat shockingly, in my opinion that the CEO of Broadcom actually wrote a blog post specifically addressing these issues. And, and I say shocking because that means these have risen to the point where this isn't just grumbling on the street. This is like, hey, I need to address this. And mm -hmm. uh, I actually read both an article in our Technic and, um, and then his actual blog post. And what was interesting about it is I read the, um, the article first and, and the article was sort of like reinforcing everything we talked about. I then read the full blog post and it was it was a little less so. It wasn't quite the, you know, because the the article in our technique was sort of like the impression that they sort of created was that the Broadcom CEO just sort of said, you know what, this is it. This is what we're doing. This is what we came here to do. And, you know, who cares if you don't like it? Mm -hmm. And the blog post was a little bit, you know, a little bit more nuanced than that and a little bit more balanced. And you know, actually had some elements of trying to put forth a reasonable vision of what they were trying to do, um, at least in terms of the overall future strategy for VMware and where some of the other elements of Broadcom fit into it. And so I thought it was better than than probably the press that it's getting, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know that it changes my underlying opinion of the raw mechanics of what's at play, but I'm curious your take. Yeah, I, I agree that in that it, it has been a tumultuous uh, couple of months if you are involved with VMware in any way at all. Uh, seeing all of the channel accounts being uh, moved back to direct management of VMware and seeing how VMware is getting rid of uh, the perpetual licenses and forcing people into a subscription, uh, subscription accounts similar to how uh, Adobe did once upon a time. And uh, seeing uh, all the, the sticker shock associated with that uh, has been uh, quite a surprise to many, many VMware customers. I think uh, even at the top levels, Broadcom is seeing uh, that uh, this is ex uh, going to affect future revenues more than previously expected. I'm pretty sure that when Broadcom bought VMware, they just thought we are buying this virtualization company this core company in so many uh, IT accounts, and we can pretty much do whatever we want because there is no way to escape VMware uh, and virtualization. And although that is to some extent true, I, I think Broadcom has uh, pushed it uh, pushed uh, harder than people originally expected. I think people expected at least a little bit of a leeway and a little bit of a honeymoon period where things would. Uh, keep going as is for call it six months to a year before the screws really got turned. And no, we are just starting full out by removing the partners, uh, going straight to subscription, jacking up the prices, and leaving some real questions as to what might happen in the future from an innovation perspective. So I think Broadcom is realized um, 
we can't just treat this as a cash cow. We still have to take the innovation seriously because also if we don't take the innovation seriously, then CIOs just basically say there is no roadmap for uh, moving forward over the next three to five years. We, we, we just need to jump ship as quickly as possible. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I think that the part that that maybe they misjudge is that you are correct in the short term. You do not just rip this stuff out and and mm -hmm. go change, right? But over the longer haul, and we're in the state where we're we're refreshing things so constantly now that mm -hmm. that longer haul isn't that long. That yeah, there are lots and lots of options, and I think you know it was evidenced a little bit. I, I mentioned that there's a, some that the that. Uh, uh, that uh, sorry, the Hoktan that put out this mm -hmm. vision that I thought was a little bit, you know, better than maybe some of the press. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, what I what I appreciated was I think very accurately assessed. You know, in this it says he spoke to CIOs and CTOs and said that the, there are three themes emerging over their challenges. Right, and the first mm -hmm. is the complexity of slowing organizations down. Um, in an era in which speed is critical to win, I'm literally quoting from this now, there's a need to simplify IT to support this increased business velocity and provide the flexibility needed to respond quickly to market changes and resili resiliency and security are paramount. And I think that's all absolutely dead on, right? And so the mm -hmm. question is, and so they're making the case that what they call VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation is the answer because it provides this foundation to, as they say, become your own cloud provider. And so it's very clear that in my mind that this is saying that, hey, they're getting that pushback. It's like, well, wait a minute, I can just you know make this migration and I need to modernize anyway, so why wouldn't I do that? And so to me, I think the big, you know, looking at this you know, from an analysis standpoint, is this going to hold water? The big question is, do people want to be their own cloud provider? That's, yeah. I think, going to be the big, big question mark um, around this. And there's so many different ways to skin this. And you know, I'm a huge believer of hybrid cloud hybrid IT as the future. Mm -hmm. um, but th this is quite a bet, I think, if they're trying to preserve the cash cow by saying, you know, everyone wants to be their own cloud provider, I think that's going to be a really interesting question mark. Yeah. So I don't think anybody doubts that there's always at least one workload that you want to keep uh, private, uh, at, at least uh, because uh, you don't want it shared with the outside world, you're keeping uh, your 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 key secrets there. Uh, there's there's always some workload, some server that you want to keep private. But honestly, that's a, such a tiny fraction of your uh, overall hybrid uh, em computing environment that uh, it doesn't necessarily justify the let's call it the five x uh, price increases in VMware that that some. Uh, some clients are seeing now. And I think that's gonna be a real challenge. Um, I, I know VMware has uh, talked uh, a strong game about wanting to continue uh, Tanzu, their kind of application development and workload management and cloud FinOps uh, set of capabilities uh, that go beyond our virtualization and really to the management of hybrid cloud. They talk a strong game about wanting to continue progress there. But I think it's uh, still very much a work in progress as to whether they're serious about that. Because uh, when you talk about all of those capabilities uh, to the CIO office, um, there are a lot of other players that they think about before they think of VMware, uh, quite frankly, uh, across all of those areas. Even though uh, VMware, so for instance, VMware technically has more cloud spend under management than any other uh, cloud FinOps vendor. Yet VMware and uh, Broadcom never talk about that because it's just not top of mind to them. It's just such an uh, afterthought to them. So you have to think, if you're the market leader and you don't even care about uh, this part of the market uh, enough to advertise it, like how much do you really care about doing this job? Yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting. I just, I just think there's, there's, I mean, to a certain extent, this almost introduced more questions and answers for me and um, I, and the hard part is there's so many other things as as we were talking about that are relevant that this is the plumbing and I, you know it's obviously critical it's obviously important but it's it is it is not the thing i mean it's only the thing people are talking about right now because of what broadcom has done otherwise it is not the core area of focus and so that i think is is you know going to be the headwind that they're running into Speaking